right now, I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, the LRT, the, uh, the, the planning around the LRT. I mean, we talked about this uh, briefly earlier this morning. Actually, uh, Regional Councillor Tom Galloway was on the show, and I asked him about this um, because, uh, you know, we knew we were going to talk about it, and I asked him about this. I asked him about if he was aware that there's a petition uh, that's going around as well that's addressed to him. Tom, while I have you, let me ask you about this because we're actually going to be talking about this uh, a little bit later on in the show. Are you aware of some of the issues that people have been bringing up on the LRT front um, with, with with respect to the Trainer Avenue um, uh, I guess there's a, there's a section of Trainer Avenue there where there are no crosswalks in, in some of the construction and people have to walk like a kilometer to get across. Are you aware of that issue? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been there on a number of occasions looking it over and been in contact with uh, the group that is uh, is behind that. TriTag? Uh, well, well, TriTag isn't really behind it. Uh, TriTag's involved in it, but no, the tenant group. Okay. You know, the group called KW Tenant Group. Who uh, who raised the uh, the concern, and uh, the city of Kitchener has agreed uh, after we contacted them to uh, express this uh, particular concern uh, to do a study on pedestrian movement in the area. The city has never had a crosswalk through this particular area, although there have been informal crossings, uh, a number of them uh, through the hydro right away over over the years. Uh, but the city has never seen it necessary to actually put in a, uh, a crosswalk or a, a pathway system. So now that the uh, LRT is going through there and the fences have gone up, of course, the informal crossings can't take place anymore. Uh, but uh, this is really more of a city matter because the city takes care of, uh, of uh, pedestrian uh, mobility and accessibility. Uh, and so they're going to do a study. We're going to participate in it. And if the at the end of the day uh, a crossing is is deemed to be necessary, then we'll ha- then we'll give that some consideration. Um, but uh, it was never raised as an issue during the planning process uh, back in 2012, 2013, when all the details were being put together. But uh, that's not to say we can't revisit it now. Uh, but uh, the solution. Uh, will come after we uh the city does this uh, particular study well i just I, and i'm not sure if you know this but uh, uh there's uh, there's a petition going online as well about installing the the lrt pro- uh, pedestrian crossings uh, there oh, on, well, on fair aware, but, uh, oh you are aware because it because it's actually addressed to you <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, i, I, I kind of I noticed that uh, <laughs> uh and, and it was only addressed to me because i'd already been in consultation with the group and uh, and they're trying to uh, move forward the issue. And so we've been able to get the city to undertake a quick uh, study to find out uh, how many numbers of people uh, you know, would like to have that crossing, what are the options, uh, a level crossing, an overpass, how far uh, would they have to go if they go around it. Uh, the city is constructing a, uh, a community trail uh, parallel to the LRT tracks on the trainer side from Wilson to Corland. Uh, so that'll be a, a fully stone dust uh, community trail, but that doesn't get you across the tracks over to Fairway Road. But because this is not a crossing that uh, is transit related, uh, we have paid for, that is the region has paid for land and for access to properties for uh, sidewalks uh, to get to LRT stations, but this is not one that uh, would get people to an LRT station. So it, this is really more of a city responsibility to try to figure out the solution, but the region will be fully cooperative in that regard. Mm. Okay, Tom, uh, well, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that, and clearly you are. But what, what, what we want to focus on here is the lack of walkability in the Trainer Avenue neighborhood, a fence built along the one kilometer quarter stretch between Wilson and Cortland is cutting off residents from their sources of to things like, uh, you know, shopping, uh, food and, and work. And in some cases, people are walking on the uh, and, and walking on and over the tracks through holes in the fences. Over 163 people have signed a petition, as I mentioned, to get to the pedestrian cross over installed uh it uh, it will be delivered to tom galloway and ken sealing uh, as i mentioned uh, once it uh, reaches 200 signatures i guess is 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 what uh, is up on that um uh, on that petition online anyway uh, joining us in studio right now is mark jackson brown who is a contributor with tritag.ca um 
Thanks for being in studio, first of all. Thanks yep. for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. Um, now, you wrote about this um, on, on tritech.ca, uh, specifically about the Trainer Avenue neighborhood, and, and we were just chatting before before uh, we, we came on here um, about you know how you feel like, like this neighborhood was kind of left behind or it was forgotten about in, in this planning. Let me ask you, um, th- this, this specific concern um, has to do with the fact that people seem to be cut off from some of the things that I talked about, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's basically the point that you're trying to make. Exactly. Um, do you, so, do you, I mean, why do you think that's happened? Was it to, for the lack of planning? Was it to, that, you know, were they forgotten about? Uh, the impression that I get is that uh, a lot of it was the, the planning on the, the d- detailed design stuff was done relatively quickly for LRT um, because we were trying to make sure that it happens and happens quickly. Um, and on budget. Uh, so a lot of things have been hammered out quickly, and there's been levels of public consultation. Some places have been gotten more attention than others. And this is one where, um, because it was the hydro- use of the hydro corridor, it was finalized rather late in the process because they were talking with Hydro One, getting permissions to use that area. This is one where we didn't really know exactly what was going to happen for the longest time. And it wasn't until a few months ago that we finally saw fence posts being put up and fences being strung along that we finally got the actual confirmation that yes, there would be, or no, there would be no crossing across the, uh, hydro, across the hydro corridor there. Um, this is an area where there's about a dozen informal crossings of the hydro corridor before there was LRT. People, little dirt tracks uh, right, connecting right. to the services there. Um, and now there's a fence up. And now right. there's a fence. And and so so what are people doing uh, to get around? Are they are they walking around the entire fence, or are they making makeshift? Uh, you know, they putting holes in the fence, or what's what's going so, on? So uh, last time I was down there was about two weeks ago, uh, and at that time there is, seems to be an access hole in the fence for the construction workers. Basically, they haven't fenced it off completely. It looks like they're going to be putting up a gate there eventually. Um, so right now people are able to get access into the where the rails are. Um, through that section. And so people are starting to have to go the long way around, but it's not completely cut off yet. Um, but you can go there at any time and just watch um, for 10 minutes, and you'll see many people going through there and cutting, walking directly across the tracks. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously there are dangers to that. Um, yeah. And, and uh, so, so what, what in your mind would be the right thing to do here? Uh, some kind of crossover, some kind of walkway to be built? I mean, uh, I, I know that uh, it's not like this is being wrapped up anytime soon, right? Like there's still about 18 months of construction mm-hmm. left to go here. So in your mind, um, the right thing to do would be to do what? Uh, the ideal is to basically just install a, a level crossing, just, just a pathway leading up to the tracks and over it. Um, from the sounds of it, they're going to want to make sure it's fully signalized, um, even though there are many examples of LRTs, even in Canada, where you have unsignaled uh, crossings uh, for pedestrians. Uh, so this would require them getting agreement with uh, one of the private businesses on the other side so that there would be to have an opening onto their property. Um, the one side is uh, just the hydro corridor and has an existing and will have an existing pathway on it. So that's no problem. Um, And, yeah, just a simple crossing somewhere in the midpoint. Um, There's a McDonald's that would be perfect to open up right behind. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and you have access to McDonald's there. Uh, So, uh, and and how did you, I mean, are you just keeping an eye on this, or how did you, did you hear from someone that this was an issue? So I've actually been kind of watching this since about 2013. Um, I've always been kind of curious about the dynamics of that neighborhood, because I've Watched, looked on Google Maps, and I've seen all the little lines crisscrossing the hydro right, corridor. Right. And so I took the trip down there some time ago to see uh, uh, how LRT was going to affect this. And because there were no detailed, detailed plans of that section for the longest time, um, it was hard to tell what was going to happen. So I've been keeping a side eye on it. Um, at, in 2014, when the construction started, I noticed, oh, they're putting up fences everywhere for construction. Maybe they'll put in a real crossing. But... Finally, this past uh, summer, it was clear that that was not the case. And and I wonder, uh, I mean, have you noticed uh, other places where this is, uh, where there are similar issues, or is this specific to just this neighborhood, or or, or are you aware of other places along the route where where this is, uh, you know, where there are similar issues? This is the only place on the route where significant there's significant impact to the walkability of an area. 
Um, everywhere else, you either have areas which it's there are a couple of informal crossings, but they don't really connect important destinations together. Um, like one residential cul-de-sac and another are separated by the railway corridor, and it's not a big deal there. Um, other places like Waterloo Park, there's been lots and lots of discussion about making sure that connectivity across the railway corridor is paramount. Um, and at uh, the University of Waterloo, there's lots of crossings have been put in in those places. Mm-hmm. Um, but here is the only place where, because there were no official crossings beforehand, only these dozen ones of varying levels of formality, um, but none that the city would declare as official crossings. Um, it simply got slipped and was not included in the plan. And and this is a city issue, right? This isn't a regional issue. Uh, according to Tom Galloway earlier this morning, again, regional councillor, he's saying this is more of a, of a city issue um, and, and that there are conversations and discussions happening about this right now. It's a bit of an issue for both. Um, the city is in, in charge of its own trails. However, the ION project is, of course, a project of the region. So right. the region is going to be the ones who have to implement it in the end. Um, the city needs to get uh, a business owner on side to have a trail open up to their property um, and then push the city to the region to make sure it happens. Uh, I, I know. Um, I know that uh, there was a there was an issue for for quite some time, and I'm not sure if it's uh, if people are still talking about it. But uh, Waterloo Street near downtown, um, by uh, the train tracks there, I, I think it's Waterloo Street going down to Victoria. Um, that was uh, that was a way where you know you could drive up and you can walk, and there you know there are neighborhoods behind. Um, do you know where I'm talking about near uh, Wellington, yes, yes, Waterloo, I do and Wellington? This now. Yeah. That that uh, entire section was blocked off as well and uh and you had to walk all the way around i think it was down to duke and and back around yeah. um you, you know and and so, so i know that there were some people that were complaining about that but uh, for the most part i think you know maybe people just got used to walking that that extra you know however long it is but um i mean how is this different from from cases like that i mean how, what what makes this specific case different basically it's the extremeness of the uh of the detour that people have to walk um, it's there are people people who were 100 meters away from a service like the one of the restaurants mm-hmm. from their home, uh, and now it will take an entire kilometer of walking in order to reach that same place. Um, so that is an extreme distance. Uh, the Waterloo Street closing, uh, well, certainly frustrating, and s- because like often enough, the construction people don't even really need that space to work in. Um, it's really a byproduct of well, Victoria is also closed, right. so it's and then occasionally they close Duke Street as well. Um, so that one is a temporary problem, whereas the Trainor Avenue neighborhood is going to be living with this forever. Right, and that's and that's uh, that's really the issue. Um, okay, so I listen. I want to open up the phone lines and just get people's thoughts on this, and uh, you know, maybe people have noticed uh, other areas where they they have problems with. So you can call us in, uh, call in right now if you'd like at five one nine five seventy twenty five forty five star five seventy on your cell. You can uh, email into eric at 570news.com as well. We're in studio this afternoon with uh, Mark Jackson Brown, a contributor to tritag.ca, writing about uh, the Trainer Avenue neighborhood and a uh, fence that was uh, built along there, a uh, uh, one kilometer corridor stretch between Wilson and Cortland that's cutting off residents from, you know, shopping, food, work, etc. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with much more after this. The Eric Drill Show continues on 570 News. All right, welcome back. It is 1249. Thanks so much for being along uh, in studio this afternoon with Mark Jackson Brown. He's a contributor to tritag.ca, uh, writing about to the ion walkability fences, and it's never too late to fix mistakes. Uh, in particular, what we're talking about is the walkability in the Trainer Avenue neighborhood, where a fence there built along a one kilometer quarter stretch between uh, Wilson and Cortland is cutting people off from, you know, shopping, food, work, uh, things like that. And in some cases, people. Uh, you know, are walking over the tracks through holes in the fences there. Uh, there's a petition actually up right now that uh, we know that councillors are aware of. Uh, Tom Galloway, regional councillor, who was on the show earlier this morning, uh, I asked him about it. Uh, it's up at change.org to install an LRT pedestrian crossing to Fairway Road from the Trainer um, uh, neighbourhood. 
Uh, and uh, that is, uh, you know, about 164 supporters right now. It's looking to reach 200. Uh, but that is up there. So people are aware of it. Um, and, and Mark, let me ask you, I mean, as, as you as you know, someone you said that, you know, has been kind of keeping track of this or keeping an eye on, no pun intended, uh, on the construction of this since 2013, as you say. Uh, how have you found the, the construction being handled, generally speaking, in terms of, uh, you know, be it detours or, or, or the walkability of an uptown or a downtown? Um, overall, in terms of the construction problems, uh, the construction detours, I mean, it's been, it's been frustrating. However, it's been a case of, like, the short-term pain for long-term gain. Um, I've done plenty of walking around uptown and had noticed that, oh, the crossing of the street is closed today and I have to go all the way mm-hmm. three blocks that right. way. Um, but it's, it's, it's certainly frustrating, but it's f- ultimately for the greater good and I just grin and bear it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle down. and <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate that uh, accessibility has been impacted, um, and, but it, it's a case of the speed with which they're going through this construction. We're building this thing much faster than many other places. I mean, our whole construction is taking like two years shorter than Ottawa's LRT, for instance. So we're, we're really blazing through it, and the, the construction workers can only keep up with it so quickly right. uh, to maintain access. Do you think that that is part of the reason why some things are missed? I mean, when it comes to the planning stages, I mean, the, it, if it you know it certainly is moving quickly, uh, is it, do you think that plays a role in some of the mistakes, if you will, or, or you know, like the Trainer Avenue? Um, some of the uh, issues he, like this do seem to come from a case of we we made sure to get shovels in the ground for LRT um, with no major delay. And in some cases, there are a few places along the line where it could have used, there could have been a bit of a sober second thought about how things were going to be built, what the uh, what the construction conditions were going to be, like how intersections were going to be created. Uh, Caroline and Urban in Uptown Waterloo is being rebuilt, but it still doesn't help the uh, cyclists through that area, through that area. Um, so that's going to be have to be fixed later on, um, or it's just going to be a pain point forever. So there's a few places here and there where they just didn't let the plans uh, bake long enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting way of putting it. And I just want to be clear uh, when it comes to the Trainer Avenue um, section that we've been talking about. I mean, this is something that is permanent, right? I mean, this is something that, like, once this is built, what you're saying is this this separation um, is something that's going to be permanent. Mm-hmm. Right? Is that that's what you're saying? It right? is. It the plans as they are is that it will be permanent, and if people want to access those businesses, well, they have to walk all of the way to uh, Wilson or Cortland, right, and around. And and I want to make sure that you know people understand that because a lot of the other things that that you know maybe people are seeing around town and are driving around and you know being detoured and a detour is closed and things like that. Those are all the, are temporary. This is what the reason why we're talking about this is because it's something that's permanent. That's right. And and uh, so I mean and again if you had it your way um, you know for, because people some people I know are thinking this and I and I've been getting emails when I talk about the LRT about people saying look uh, you know what is the solution here right we this is a massive undertaking it's a massive uh, construction project people you're going to be inconvenienced I mean it's just it's it's it goes with the territory right I, mm-hmm. I mean what do you say to people that just say look. Uh, quit your whining. Essentially, you're going to be you're going to be inconvenienced for for you know uh, some time as this is being built. Well, I kind of agree with that point. It, it's just it's we have to suck it up, but uh, we do a lot of it, don't we? Uh, yeah, complaining. Yeah, we, it, it's we're all we all we've all got our our right to complain. Right. Okay. So um, you know, so what where do you what are you hoping happens with this then moving forward? Uh, as as we've been saying, counselors are aware of it. What do you what do you hope happens? So uh basically the city of Kitchener has agreed to meet with the residents association, the residents in that area, to discuss with them the next steps, uh and start working with them on making sure that there's a crossing in the future. Uh they haven't scheduled that meeting yet, but hopefully we'll see that in the next few weeks. Um and then the city of Kitchener will work on that and presumably after that it'll be passed along to the region uh, so that the region can start uh, coming up with plans to actually install this crossing. Uh, This may have to wait until after Grand Link is done uh, overall construction as a a bit of a 
change done after uh, August 2017 mm -hmm. when all construction wraps up. Uh, but because the trains aren't even showing up until 2018, uh, we've got a good six months there to get the fix in before uh, service even starts. So, so in other words, um, you know, if, if it's decided that a crosswalk is going in, it may be more uh, construction or, you know, it may come after Grand Link is finished mm -hmm. with, with their construction. Yeah. So it may not it might it might not happen right now. It might come after the LRT is actually is actually in. Is that is that does that make sense to you? I mean, if if the trains are running through that area, it's unfortunate that we may have to wait that long. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, leave some of those gates open that haven't been installed yet, uh, so that the residents can still kind of sneak through well before trains start running, uh, so that they can still access right, their home, right, their right. businesses. So, are you going to continue doing this, uh, keeping an eye on stuff? Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, why why do you why do you have such an interest in in the LRT and and kind of keeping an eye on it? I mean, it all comes down to walkability. Um, the whole LRT project is about making sure that we are building ourselves to be a walkable community. And I've been really interested in the walkability in places that people don't tend to think about walkability. Everyone thinks about it in uptown, in downtown, around the universities, um, but it's important everywhere along the line uh, and this is one place where they've it's been a walkable neighborhood but no one's actually really noticed that it's a walkable neighborhood until the spotlight has been shone on it now so it's just a matter of meeting the goals of rapid transit and trying to make sure that it improves the lives of everyone along the line mm -hmm. okay well listen um uh, are you well if you're going to be contributing more to TriTag, uh, maybe we'll talk again uh in, in the future i want to thank you very much for taking the time and, and joining us in the studio and bringing this forward too because i know i know that uh, sometimes it all gets lost in the uh in the in the traffic nightmares and in the headaches that go that way when I mean, we love talking about this but Thanks for bringing this forward. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, there's uh, Mark uh, Jackson Brown, who's again a contributor to TriTag. By the way, you can check that out um, at tritag.ca. Uh, it is entitled Ion Walkability Fences, and it's never too late uh, to fix mistakes. So you can check that out there. And for those uh, who have emailed in, I just see a couple of emails here about uh, the petition. Change.org is where that petition is up right now. Install an LRT pedestrian crossing to Fairway Road from the trainer neighborhood so you can check that out as well.